I've had a an interesting personal path to believing in the sentience of of the earth and of everything, believing in a kind of animism that uh, life permeates not just those things which grow like plants and animals, but also anything to which we give our attention, our adoration, our appreciation. That could include a beautiful stone wall or a sunset that these things become alive in the contact with our conscious attention. That life exists as an interaction between living things. And that's something that I'm working with on a regular basis. And a couple of the seminal moments for me in that appreciation um, I wanted to share. The first was my readings of eth ethnographic literature and, um, and some of the accounts that in the act of taking life to sustain oneself, which is very common among indigenous peoples, direct taking of life in hunting. Uh, that there is, um, well, you, you, we often hear it sort of in the folk mythology around Native Americans that, you know, they would thank the animal for having given it, spilled its blood. Um, and that was an initial idea that was planted in me very young, that somehow these people who live in, in nature have a different way of being uh, around things that are alive, that they they believe thanking a dead animal somehow is acknowledging the animal differently than we do. Boy, they must really understand sort of something that I don't understand. I was touched by that. Then I was working with a naturalist who was guiding my students on an edible plant hike, and um, he pointed out some edible plants, and, and students started to pull them out of the ground. And he stopped them and said, you know, you can't just take any of them. You have to look at all of them and you have to have a sense that one of them is the one you're supposed to take. And um, and it was an interesting idea. And as I began to continue my hikes every morning at the job I had, I would hike several miles through state park wilderness. I would, um, during the different seasons when the edible plants were growing, I would experiment for myself with the idea that is one of these here for me to eat? And I would look at them and before I was willing to pull one out and eat it, I would try to feel which one it was I was supposed to eat. I was playing with this idea that there's an interaction, that there's a possible communication, and that there is one for me, and that it may not be, uh, it may not be there. I may have to pass up a patch of miner's lettuce. Um, so that was my next sort of connection in, in that way. And, and since I was hiking in, in the state parks, I also passed in the morning many deer. And I began to wonder, if, as I looked at a group of seven deer, if I were hunting, would one of them give me the sense that that was the one I was supposed to take? Would I have a, a sense, would I have an awareness that I can't just pull back the bow and let the arrow fly and take down the first or most luscious looking one out there? Would I have to have some other level of communication, of connection, um, before I could do that? And I got, I got a distinct sense that yes, there's, this is not an arbitrary thing, we don't just take life. Um, and uh, then perhaps one of the most potent moments for me was as I was hiking in an early morning on a, on a vacation day. So I was hiking on trails I hadn't been on for a while. And one of the trails was in a riparian woodland uh, down um, um, in a low part of a valley. And I was on a shaded path looking at my feet, looking at the ground as I walked. And I suddenly noticed on the ground sawdust, what looked like fresh sawdust. It looked very strange. And I looked at it, and then I looked up and around, and right to my very left was maybe eight inches across was the was the sheared off limb of a of a, a large live oak, and so I realized, oh, that that branch must have have come too close to the trail, and the maintenance crews came out and severed it. But I, that thought passed very quickly, and in the, in the initial sense that I had immediately after that awareness of where the sawdust had come from and how recently the branch had been severed was I had a, a sense a sense that the tree was unsettled somehow. It, it was like, and it wasn't because the branch had been cut off so much as the way it had been cut off. I just had a sudden vision of these men talking about something unrelated to the tree, doing their work, cutting off the tree, hauling it away, and never once acknowledging the tree as a living entity. And I had a sense in that moment that the tree was unsettled. It was it had no closure around this severed limb. And I don't know, I, I just went with the feeling and I placed my hand over that gaping, fresh wound of, of a branch. My hand couldn't even cover it, it was fairly large. 
and I just had a moment of appreciation and I felt things settle. And then I took my hand away and continued walking and I let myself reflect on that for days. And I, and I just wondered whether it would have been a simple act of them acknowledging the tree. It's antiquity. It was an old tree. It could have been a couple hundred years old. Um, and it, just acknowledging that they needed to take a branch because it represented a safety hazard for hikers and to just have a relationship. So this was two years ago and I, in, since that time, have spent a lot of my outdoors experiences in an attempt to, to feel the life that comes out of the earth into the plants and animals. And when I look at them, to not just see them as an aesthetic object, something beautiful, something moving in the wind, something green, but also as something that's vibrantly connected to a living earth that I am also vibrantly connected to. In other words, to feel not only my appreciation, but my communion, my connection, my shared life on this earth with that thing growing or that bird that just alighted on the stone wall in front of me, to feel that kinship. And as I work with it, it begins to become something that's almost like language. I feel it and understand it much deeper, in a much deeper way than I can describe it. Um, I heard myself say uh, a, a language. Um, I, there's a book by Derek Jensen called A Language Older Than Words, and he spends the first couple chapters describing these unusual accounts of people's communication with animals. Um, and then it, he relates several of his own. And it all makes a lot of sense to me uh, as I read that kind of thing. And um, so that's where I am today, Tribal Jazzman Scholar. Thanks for joining me.